banking, yeah. finance industry, it's it's a commodity, right? Uh, yeah. It's like having to fill up your car with gas. Like you need a transactional place. So why choose one or the other? Do you agree, Jay? Yeah. I mean, you have to find a way to distinguish yourself in the marketplace, right? When, yeah. when you provide the same services um, as everybody else, obviously, like you said, it's a commodity. And although you can always come up with special promotions in offers that are a little bit different from others, you know, at the core, those are one-time deals. The, the user experience is going to be that consistent exposure with uh, that bank or credit union. And that's where brand authenticity really comes into play, right? It, you really yeah. need that to um, maintain truth to yourself because it's easy to get somebody hooked on a promotion but if the experience at the door isn't there or is inconsistent, then you've essentially just hooked them short term. And obviously, as a bank, you're not looking for short term relations. Uh, the value is in the long term. You know, I think some of the ways that you can connect with your audience is, is tell their story, right? You've got members, mm -hmm. you've got customers, and they have done things in their lives. I mean, maybe you have some people that just financed a car, took a cross country trip to run marathons. Like if that's who you're going to be, if you, you know, say, go out there and conquer your dreams. If you're the FI that's going to conquer dreams and you have people that are running marathons, highlight them in your ads, talk about the great things that they're doing and how you support them relate and be where your customers and our members are right. Showcase yeah. that with the community involvement too, or when they're on the board, sometimes your staff is on, volunteer boards of directors. Talk about that. Talk about the important work that they're doing, giving back to the community. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, that's a really good example, right? I almost even think of Apicosity. Uh, we're just marketing agency, but you know, Eric, the owner is all about the outdoors life and he climbs mountains and he has a, a goal to climb, obviously the tallest one. Yeah. And you know, He's crazy. just because, <laughs> just because we're a marketing agency or just because you know, your financial institution is just a bank doesn't mean you can't be an outdoor brand, right? Absolutely. Like you can have the tones where you service in the financial space, but your passion is with, you know, being outdoors or allowing people to live that outdoor life, right? Supporting those who have that dream, right? Or yeah. to your uh, previous example, right? Of just like, um, uh, animal ownership, right? Maybe you just really love pets and you lean into that. And I think that will open opportunities if you think about it with partnerships that maybe you haven't explored yet before or thought of because now suddenly your brand sort of stands for something and you're intentionally trying to um, live within a space, right? And you're trying to attract audiences from a space and that opens up, opens up a lot of possibilities to, um, doorways of where you can go both on the messaging side, on the creative side, um, on the partnership side. And that's where you can really distinguish yourself from others. There'll always be the promotions, but not every bank is going to be climbing mountains, right? So exactly. I think that's where um, you can really see the difference when you think about it and how, you know, there's so many banks out there that are just there again. All they stand for is great service. Uh, great people, and that's that's fine, but that's not um, that's not going to draw anybody new in, and that's not going to cause somebody to just suddenly wake up one day and be like, "Oh man, I really want to bank with them." It's just like, yeah, I had a, I had a good experience there. Showing off your account essentially as if it was a person running it, like an influencer, instead of just a business trying to push um, their objectives down your throat. You want it to be more of a social space. It's called social media for a reason. Yeah. Um, you want people to engage and be social on there, so. Uh, the more engaging, entertaining, educational the content is, the better we've seen it perform, especially in the FI space as well. Um, it's already a big ask to ask your current members and current customers to follow your social channels. Um, you have to be very unique, original, entertaining to potentially even have a possibility of a non-member customer following your accounts and engaging. So if you can find a way to be niche enough in that market and allow your content to be entertaining and have that independent value with it, 
then you can maybe find a way to get a new customer or at least a new follower to your brand. You're like, this bank is actually teaching me some things I didn't know about this credit union. They look so fun. I would love to be a member, even though I don't follow them. If you play your cards right with content, you can show up on people's For You pages. You can show up on their Explore pages, um, even when they're not searching for you. And that's when you have the best potential chance to obtain people that aren't already your customers or credit union members following you. You know, the goal of organic social media content is engagement. It is right. brand awareness. And I think if you can, like as a FI organization, if you can just level set with your leadership that like we see success as growth in followers, growth in shares, you know, growth in comments, not necessarily I can do a one-to-one -one attribution model of people who went to our Facebook from a post to the website, to an application, to getting that uh, loan serviced. Right. No, that, uh, that reminds me of the 70-20-10 rule. 70% 70 of the content on social media doesn't really matter. The platform in this case should be original, entertaining, educational content from your account. So even if that is a fun graphic that's more branding, or if it's a fun Instagram reel you're doing, or it's even a TikTok that's cutting edge and trending, um, that should be entertaining. It should be educational. It should be something in there that's original content from your own um, your own brand, making that brand more human. 20% of the time, you should be um, sharing other accounts' content. You should be sharing user-generated content. If someone tags you a uh, picture at your branch or closing on a, on a car, um, sharing that content 20% uh, of the time um, is, is very beneficial there. And then only that 10% of the time, so this is very... One out of every 10 posts should actually sell. So you want to One gain out of that every trust. 10. That's right. That is so against you, what we are seeing, right? <laughs> right. So when you look at someone's Instagram feed, and just let's take these nine tiles, for example, probably three, four, or five of them are going to be have big numbers on them with rates. Yep. But if, if um, nine of those were enter an, enter an entertaining series with uh, an outstanding teller or bank manager that is giving you tips on where to invest your money or what kind of savings accounts to um, partake in, um, that could very quickly like shift the tide of like, hey, these guys are actually providing me with something that's, that's beneficial other than just saying, here's our rates this month, here's a new car on the graphic, um, different customizable content like that. So it's, it's one out of 10, which is hard to comprehend or tell everyone as far as Jay was saying for that attribution, mm -hmm. but it'll really help grow your community over time and kind of solidify your brand online. There's a good, there's a balance, right? Like I understand doing and using those calendars, but like you said, um, make sure it's different so you don't blend in. And it's just not a picture of a apple blossom tree saying happy first day of spring. Well, what does that first day of spring mean to your members or to your brand? And then you can use that and customize the message and, and then that'll help you stand out. You feel the same there? Exactly. You know, it's interesting because it, you know, the spin, maybe, maybe you still want to talk about National Coffee Day, right? Um, yeah. But maybe your credit union is really, you know, supporting the vets or vet owned and operated, right? So then maybe you should find a veteran owned coffee group, right? And make a partnership there and, you know, advocate that you're going to do free coffee. I know um, around here, uh, some banks and credit unions actually will buy the first, you know, five hundred or thousand uh, dollars of coffees at the drive-through at a specific location, um, sort of as just to celebrate both the day. But then it gets a little bit more brand exposure. It kind of ties back to what they're trying to achieve, which is get a little bit of business, um, and then they can craft some unique messaging, and that makes sense. You know, it's not mm -hmm. ideal because everybody else will be celebrating coffee, but it's it's tailored to you plan and market lines of business, right? Oh. So, you know, it's it's also interesting to see how these two things sort of overlap um, where people are like, oh, well, you know, spring and summer's coming. That's when people are moving out. That's when they're looking to buy houses. Let's do a big marketing promotion around that. They're running their mortgage campaigns. They're running their HELOCs. 
Um, and then it comes to winter and they're like, okay, let's turn off all mortgage campaigns. Let's turn off all of these things. And it's like, well, there's still people who are buying houses. It's not like they're just like, oh, well, it's too cold. I guess I won't do it anymore. It's like, there's still a need. People are still moving around. They're still doing it. And I think that's, um, that's missed opportunity because here again, everybody's promoting during the summer, right? Vehicle loans, they're promoting mortgages, and then they kind of stop when it starts to get colder, when you'd say it's the off season, you know, but that's where the opportunity really is, is to get in front of your um, audiences during that off season, because guess what? That's not when they're being blasted with messaging for the same thing. That's how you can stand out, right? You know, and the, I love what you said there, because I feel like there is, you know, that experimenting with things, right? Like, let's try it, try it, see what it is, put your gut behind it, look at it in the eyes of your audience. And if it doesn't work, that's okay. You learned from that, right? And that you just keep building the momentum and the learning from all the things that you're trying. So we're not saying not use promotional calendars. We're saying target it, make it specific, look at it in the eyes of your audience. If it doesn't work, that's okay. Try something else then and keep keep that forward momentum. And I think, Jay, is what you're saying, as long as you keep your brand and your target audience and make that applicable and try different seasons. Exactly. You're going to stand out. 